everyone and welcome to episode 13 of the Whatnot Podcast. My name is Kathy. I'm a disabled maker after a car accident in 2007, uh, but I still enjoy all sorts of crafty, crafty goodness and that's what we talk about on this podcast. So I'd just like to say a big welcome to all the new viewers, had quite a few in the last couple of weeks and a big big welcome back to all my lovely people that come every week and leave me a little message and we have a little chat so that's really nice. So welcome everyone. Now I'd like to say a big thank you to two people and that's Susan and M. and Susan is Ash and Eve design on Instagram and M is Carter and Brown on Instagram and they both messaged me independently and suggested that we have a little bit of a, a meet up they both assured me that they weren't creepers and they weren't um, so we met up last Thursday uh, for a coffee we had a lovely chat um, I rung the cafe before we got there to make sure they were practicing uh, social distancing with their tables and Susan and M and I also practiced uh, social distancing so everything was legit and we had a, a really nice uh, chat and a catch up and uh, talked about all crafty things and yarny things and uh, the coffee was very nice and so yeah it was a really really nice morning slash turned into an afternoon and then we all moseyed on down to spotlight and made a few uh, cheeky little purchases so yeah that was a lot of fun and really enjoyable and we've made arrangements to catch up again in a month's time so if anybody else is living in that area that um, would like to join us uh, just DM me on Instagram and I'll let you know the details. Uh, that's the Moirefield, Caboolture, Burpengary sort of area. So yeah, let me know. So thanks Susan and Em. Had a lovely time with you guys. Alright, what is this fabulousness that I'm wearing this week? Uh, this is the Radiate. Uh, jumper by Hokey and uh, I knit this a while ago uh, it's funny because uh, I don't normally wear it I can't it's it's got uh, waist shaping and I don't feel all that comfortable in it when I'm sitting in the chair I sort of feel like it um, hugs me a little bit too much around my midriff I did the split hem on it but um, now that I've actually got it on, I actually think it, well, I think it looks pretty good. So maybe I'll wear it. it fits, the sleeves fit really nicely. I really like this uh, sleeve and um, yeah, it's just, it's soft and comfortable. So the wool that I've used here, I'm just going to check my notes. So this is Nitpick Swish DK and the colour is green tea and it goes beautifully because um, this was a speckled yarn by the Australian wool store this and this colorway is called Cecile and it's a very pale pink and it's got some darker pink and the reason that I chose this green is because it's got like a, a minty green speckle in it as well so yeah quite quite nice all right so some finished objects let's get into it let's get into it Finished objects, I've got, I thought I had four, but I can't remember what else I did. I've been making quite a lot of things, as you all know, for the shop. Um, so maybe I'm getting a bit confused with that. But anyway, we'll go with what I've got here. So the first thing I will talk about is my watercolour, um, which is going to be a present for a Instagram friend of mine. And that's Dying to Knit WA. She collects llamas, she loves llamas, and she messaged me and asked me if I'd potentially do some llama cards in the shop, which I have 
made some llama cards for the shop um, but I thought that I would do her a special watercolor so I've told Michelle that after I've shown this on the podcast I will stick it in the mail for her so although this um, those eyelashes might suggest it's a girl I feel like this is a guy I feel like he's rocking that flower crown and he looks a little sassy so I was happy with how that turned out and that'll be in the mail to you Michelle it doesn't really show up very well in photos or I don't think on this but I've actually used some of the um, duochrome watercolour paints that I bought off um, Chelsea Vins Art but they don't really show up in the picture so we'll see actually I don't know if this is the case and we'll soon find out when I'm editing but uh, it's a very overcast day today very dull and dark and I can tell you right now I've got the dogs in their little pen and they're not happy about being outside but Ralph has got his jumper on but uh, I think like I feel like the lighting looks a bit better and the colors look a bit better so hopefully we won't get so much glare now let's see I'll just grab my book here and bring it a bit closer because my eyeballs are not what they used to be now I follow a fellow on Instagram and he is Nitwits and Yarn and he's recently released two beanie patterns and I wanted to support him because I think we need to support our Aussie designers full stop uh, but our male Aussie designers and I knit his turtle, uh, turtle stitch beanie this week so that's this bad boy and I really like it I use the leftover yarn from the face sweater that I made a couple of weeks ago and this was some this is I held a fluffy yarn and a mohair together to create that pom-pom I've only I haven't secured it down a hundred percent I've just tied a little bow in it so that I can take it off um, when I want to wash it but I really like it it was a warm day on Sunday and we went grocery shopping and I wore my beanie and my husband said it's a bit warm for that and I said I don't care I'm rocking the beanie I love it so I'm going to put it on probably mess my hair up but who cares so I can show it to you so that's it it's got a nice little bit of slouch to it um, I like a little bit of extra room in the back here I hope I'm getting in shot because if I wear my hair up uh, and usually I'm wearing my hair up when I've got a beanie on because I'm covering up the fact that I need to wash my hair um, I like to have a bit of room in there so I can fit my little bun slash ponytail whatever yeah so I knit the small size and I held, um, do a bit of arranging, I held two strands together because this is supposed to be a 12 ply and um, I'm pretty sure the, the yarn for the, t the face sweater was the gazelle baby wool um, but it was probably only an 8 ply so that's why I knit the small um, to compensate for the fact that it was supposed to be 12 ply but the two 8 plies together probably created more like a 16 ply and that's the small and it fits me really well and I've put one of my little handmade doovy knackies on the bottom of it but I will tell you that the pattern is really well written uh, very detailed uh, I've just watched Lindsay's podcast and I think she had some justifiable concerns about some patterns for beginners some patterns uh, have an assumption that you know what you're doing already but uh, Brendan's done a really good job on the pattern and I think for beginner knitters 
Forget knitting the scarf. Knit the beanie. It, it's quick. You've got a good result. And they look great. And who doesn't love a beanie? So good job, Brendan. And I enjoyed that so much. And I enjoyed using up just yarn in my stash, um, which you can do to make these. Uh, so I've cast on his other pattern, which I'll show you in my whips. But I've got one more finished object to show you. And I talked about a little bit last week. I showed you some fluffy faux fur and that I was planning on making something. Well, I made them, I made them like crazy because I was super in love with them. And that is these little moths. You can see the faux fur there. You can see his little fluffy face. I put a little pin on the back of it uh, so that I don't know maybe it's a little bit big for a brooch but I even thought maybe you know depending on how loud and proud you like to be you could pin it on a beanie um, but I thought also too like a cushion or um, like drapes if you had some nice lacy drapes and a few of these uh, another thing that I thought you could do is if you made them without the pin on them you could make a mobile for a child for a child's bedroom uh, one of the fellas at my husband's work they grow passion fruit as do I and it's in abundance at the moment but his wife made some passion fruit butter and they know I love passion fruit and they sent some home for me so um which I've really got to stop eating all that stuff get me out of control um but I made one of these for her and sent it to her so I made a pink one but I've made another two here so I've made this one with just scrap fabric and he's got a, a little yellow belly. You can see it. it was supposed to be lined with felt. Um, I actually lined it with quilting wadding because I just had that on hand. Um, but yeah, so cute. And this one. So I'm just going to pin them probably at various. I thought what I might do is just pin them onto my yarn I've got hanging up there um, just on my curio shelves at the back there but I think they make a nice little gift and it's just something uh, a little bit fun and I'll just tell you I got the pattern off Etsy and uh, the store was Frazzle Dazzles uh, I did go on and have a look and the pattern is not there now she's got heaps of patterns uh, to make lots of lovely little toys and things for children all fabric uh, some of them are felt some of them are cotton but I'm pretty sure if you messaged her and said that you're after the moth pattern um, she would send it to you I whipped those up probably they by the time you cut your little pieces out um, I've got here in my book I cut all my little templates out so you there's three little pieces that you need and I thought well I'll cut them out so there's three pieces and you could really adjust the size to whatever you liked but uh, I've done cut all my little pieces out so there was three as I said three pieces so the front wing the back wing and the body and I've stuck them in my book there so I don't lose them but yeah a lot of fun I'm sure that you could adapt that pattern to make to do lots of fun things with it but yep so that was another finished object that I had this week so that's that that's all my finished objects as far as the watercolors concern I am hoping to attach a little watercolor demo to the end of this video showing the little penguins so that you guys can paint them too uh, let me see if I've got one in here to show you yeah I'm making some little key rings for the shop but um, if you want to know how to paint him he's pretty easy and I am sure that you could do it 
I am going to run through a tutorial at the end of this video on how to paint that little guy. So if you're interested, you can stick around and watch that and have a go. If you're not interested, that that's fine. Um, I'll put it on the end so you can just finish up when I finish yakking on. All right, so that was that. Let me just check my notes. Uh, so my whips. So I've kept my whips to a minimum because I am going to be doing the cal on the 1st of August with uh, Lindsay from Stitch Create Love and I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on but I'll just quickly show you my book since the lighting is a bit better you might be able to see it so let's see I've got my bits and pieces they, they were some prototype foxes that I had painted for the cards uh, just trying to get some ideas on position style so I did that and on this side I've got all my notes and all my little stickers and bits and pieces that I love shoving in here to keep myself happy and I'll just read you that little quote at the bottom so it says today is not just an ordinary day today I'll create something beautiful so yep good fun there now whips all right now as I said I am working on another beanie so this is also this pattern is also by Brendan from Knitwits and Yarn and this is the uh let me see what's it called I've written it down. Put your glasses on. You won't be able to see a thing without them. Seed and rib beanie. The seed and rib beanie. So this is what I've got so far. I am using the leftover wool from Ralph's jumper, the green wool, and I'm holding it together with something else, which I'll show you in a second. This is super easy. Um, I have knit the medium size in this because... Uh, the two yarns that I held together didn't quite make up to the 12 ply but I've actually tried that on and it fits on my head okay um, but as you can see it is fading through different colors and that is because the other yarn that I'm using is a Zorba ball which will, I knit my brother a pair of socks out of this a couple of years ago and this is what I've got left so I'm holding that together with the yarn left over, which is Bloomsbury DK yarn by the Yarn Collective. And the color is Oz. And holding those two together. So this is a five ply. This is an eight ply. So that is giving me this stitch definition. And that is giving me that slight gradient fade through with the color coming through which I actually think gives it a little bit of interest again the pattern is so well written and I know Brendan has on his YouTube um, channel he has got tutorials for people like taking you through literally holding your hand right through this if you haven't done knitting before you will definitely be able to knit this following the pattern alongside the um, tutorials that Brendan's got going on. So I highly recommend that if you're interested in having a go at knitting and feel like it's a little bit daunting, I think that would definitely be something you could get into. And I'm storing that in this little guy, which is one of the bags that I've made. Um, they have a round bottom. I didn't put this one in the shop because I've never used basting spray before and I used the basting spray and went a bit heavy handed and it left a little mark there and I don't want to sell something that's not quite right. So I thought, as I've said before, I like to keep a little reject. So this is a reject and I'm keeping my hat in that. Boom. Done. Now, let me see what have I done with my glasses. 
So that's all my whips at this stage. I am thinking about casting on a pair of socks for Mill um, because I think she needs a new pair of socks. I don't really knit socks that often. Oh, the other um, whip I've got is my northeasterly I meant to show you. So I'm making quite good progress on that. Let's see if I can pick this up without dropping stitches. Just arrange it. So uh, I've got my stitch marker in here at the last point that I showed it to you. So that is right there. So since then I've finished this strip all the way down and those self-striping yarns that you can see here and here they are Luli yarns that I've purchased this is just a bare yarn um, and I've decided to rather than use the bare yarn every time because my husband liked the colors in it I'm choosing a skein of yarn from my stash that has a very subtle coloring so this is one that I'd had in my stash for a while and that yarn is, hmm, just grab my bag. That yarn is by Fruitful Fusion. And the color weight is Verbena. I'll just show you her band. It's Fruitful fusion dyes I can't remember where I got that from I probably bought that I've had it for a while I think I bought it off Etsy probably but um, as you can see that's it's almost kind of striping on its own there but I think that uh, this is actually the front that's what I've got so far for my three stripes uh, my four stripes there and I'm going to just keep working away on that stripe while I am waiting for the end of the month and yeah so really enjoying that now to my Etsy shop yay I love this section um, so I've been having a look around again and I have found something else of interest well it interests me <laughs> hopefully it interests you as well um, I found this shop on Etsy and it is called paper love book art and she is also that on Instagram she has 25 um, sales in her shop and she makes handmade journals and sketchbooks and I bought this now, as a child of the 70s, we grew up on little golden books. I did not, I don't think we had this one. I was looking for one that I left a uh, sort of a memory in my mind. And I remember the little tugboat and goodbye tonsils and things like that. But uh, this was one of the ones that she had. And she makes these up herself. So puts the, the binding on it the back of the book is as the little golden books it's it's actually a little golden book that's been dismantled and then what she does is she puts the pages in it so you've got the cover there and then you've got um, some blank pages and then you go through a little bit further and you'll come across the pages of the book so yeah that's a bit of a fun thing and I'm not quite sure what I'll do with this I might just um, look at it for a while before I start deciding I might put some of my smaller watercolor samples that I do just stick them on the pages in that and um, just make it a nice little book of, of uh, things but yeah a fun thing and let's see the details on this are that I paid $28 for that plus postage and the postage was standard and she's got on her uh, 
if you weren't into the little golden books you wanted something a little bit more sophisticated she does uh, marbling paper uh, she marbles the paper and then makes that the book cover so for the journals and the sketchbooks she's got uh, that she actually makes the books herself uh, that's what she's got in fact my uncle makes books and I've got one here let me just see I wasn't planning on showing you this but let's see if I can drag it out and he gave it to me <clears throat> when I was in hospital to inspire me to fill it up with painting which I have been doing he made this book for me so it's all handmade and I fill it up with all my I've got all my little um, paintings in there that I've done and I just if I've painted something I just slide it in which is this is one of the ones that I've painted I just slide it in there and then I've got um, got them all safe and sound I don't know why I'm showing you these all of these but uh, yeah so I, I like these he's he's put some nice uh, paper in here and um, yep yeah, he's got all the the binding and everything in it which is a far cry from what he does for a job. He's he's um, actually in law, but he made that for me. So I do use that and I quite like that. Anything handmade. I like anything handmade. Like even that, as I said, the passion fruit butter. Like just, it's so nice to get something that's handmade. Like that little jar my husband bought at home. She'd wrapped it up in brown paper. Like, it just sort of, reminds you of simpler times doesn't it a handmade item but yeah so if you're interested um belinda sent me a little note it was beautifully packaged uh and she wrote thank you kathy hope you enjoy your purchase and i'm sure that i will belinda it was all wrapped up um in this twine which i believe is a book binding twine so i've stuck that in there because um it's just a nice nice little thing all right let's see what's the next thing now i'm going to talk the next two things that i'm going to talk about are my purchases and the cal that Lindsay and i are doing and then i am going to give you a little bit of shop news so if you're not interested in any of those those things uh thanks for popping in and i will see you in two weeks or if you want to skip forward to the uh, watercolor tutorial uh, be my guest so all right purchases I've purchased a couple of things so um, now that Mills Ursa is finished uh, and I, I thought I had it there but I've put it I've put it away um, that's all finished and I think I'll knit her another jumper after I've done this Zweig um, and I'm pretty sure I will do the um, Deshane again, but not in the linen because she's having terrible problems with that. But she likes the jumper. So um, I was trying to use up my stash and I've had this lovely mustardy one from this is again the yarn collective. I really like their yarn. It's not quite the right ply, so I'm going to do a similar thing that like I did with the Ursha and hold two strands together. And the other colour that I've selected to go with it is this one. So I've purchased this from um, Lovecraft uh, and it arrived very quickly. So my plan is to knit mill the Deshane holding those two together and I think that that will dull down the brightness of the mustard to what would be more to Mill's taste she doesn't want brown but as you can see that's more like a a rust heathered rust color I would call that really nice it's got like a, a, a couple of different sort of shades of coloring in it so yeah 
so I did uh, I did purchase this was in my stash and I purchased this but when I um, put the order in I did order this um, lovely beautiful blue color because I'm going to knit Ralph another jumper because he's wearing that other one every day when I take it off him to let his skin have a bit of air you know he's not long before he's shivering and coming over to me and as soon as I pull that jumper out he's he's got his head down he wants that thing on so I thought I will knit him another one so that I can wash wash one and he can have another one so that's on my list of things to do the other purchase I made was this lovely book I had had it on order from Angus and Roberts for a while but it was taking too long to come in uh, so I cancelled the order and ended up buying it through the book depository and oh, such a nice book uh, I'm just reading a little bit each day I've got my little bookmark in there it's the illustrations in it are I just find myself staring at them they're just so pleasant simplistically pleasant there was one I should have marked it but I didn't um, this one just black and white sketch just look at them just sitting there the two of them just sitting there such such a lovely lovely book such uh, positive energy from this book to with the little little captions in it it's just so so nice and I'm just reading a little bit each day but really enjoying it uh, this book is getting quite good reviews and I understand why uh, apart from that it smells nice <laughs> who smells books me all right who smells everything yarn and books yeah uh that purchase so the, they're the only purchases other than my etsy store that i've done this week so i've been pretty good pretty good uh, i've got this here must have been going to talk about this um oh i've got to go to the dentist next on the 4th of august to have a crown done oh god i don't care about um the dentist i'm not worried about the dentist i hate how much the dentist cost the thing that i hate about it and it's the same thing with the hairdresser uh, i hate sitting around doing nothing like just sitting there uh, so i've got to be at the dentist for two hours for the crown so i'm going to cast on a pair of socks uh, i've had this yarn in my stash for ages I've never knit one of these up before so these are the perfect perfect socks um, which were this is designed by uh, um, put my glasses on I cannot read it Arnie and Carlos and they are the ones where you start it, it gives you the instructions and you knit and it self stripes and the heel comes in and I mean reading this I'm expecting them just to basically knit themselves two identical socks from the one ball so I am going to knit that up for Mill hopefully in the next couple of weeks and she will be pretty happy to get another pair of socks I think so that's something I have got on my agenda all right now the cowl with uh, Lindsay so those of you that are in the know uh, we are starting the cowl on the 1st of August and it is to knit the Zweig jumper uh, Lindsay from Stitch Create Love has opened a Ravelry uh, chatter thread which I will link below I'm not opening a separate one I am joining in on that one we are going to be drawing prizes from that draw and I have got some very exciting news about the prizes um, I believe Lindsay is going to be doing some stitch markers and something else I'm not quite sure I was going to do a watercolor painting I've flagged that I have been in touch with one of the Etsy sellers that I have found on Etsy 
and she makes lovely ceramic things. So I have put in a custom order for us, for the Zweig, and I have asked her to make me something. So it's a surprise. I'm going to show it to you when it comes in. Um, she's going to notify me when she's finished making it. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be one of the prizes. And the other prize that I am going to do is I think I am going to donate a skein of yarn and it's probably going to be a skein of yarn left over from the Zweig that I'm knitting in that bright coral colour. I've got them here, ready to go. I've got them in my ball, my little ball bag things there. I shouldn't call them ball bags, should I? No. Uh, what does Nitty Natty call them? Yarn cosy, much nicer. Yes, in my yarn cosy. Uh, yeah, so I've got an extra skein of this and I think that that's going to be the other prize. So they're going to be my two prizes. So if you are joining us and you've selected the colour that you're going to knit your Zweig in, hashtag us on time to Zweig on Instagram so that we can all have a little look and post it in the Ravelry chat group on Lindsay's um, Ravelry site there. So as I said, I'll link all that below and I've uh, already um, hashtagged my yarn and Lindsay has put her yarn on the Instagram. Uh, a few other people have as well, so it's going to be fun, fun, fun. So I think that's everything with the cow. Uh, if you've got any other questions, of course, message me, message Lindsay, and we will get straight on to answering you. All right. Now, the last thing is a little bit of shop news. Uh, the shop will be back open on the 1st of August, and I have been making lots and lots of things to fill up the shop it's gradually getting there i've sort of allocated each week so i've i've been dying throughout hence the my hands don't look that flash um i've got to be very careful when i'm dying because i don't have any a sensory feeling in the back of my arms um or well, my fingers very well so I could actually be leaning on the stove and it's burning me and I don't know and that happens that has happened um, and so I've got a couple of little burns on my hands so if that puts you off a little bit when I'm showing you that I'm sorry but I have been dyeing some more yarn I've bought some of the minis in to show you so that you can see so I've gone for a couple of brights that I've dyed up so that's that one and that one won't dwell on them for too long because you can have a look in my shop I've also done the pastels for all the pastel lovers so I've got like a almost like a little bit of a fade set in the pinks and the corals for all the lighter color lovers and that one's got the uh, blue is very similar to the socks that Lindsay has just finished knitting, the Soul Sister socks. Um, very similar colour tones in that one. Uh, I have dyed up other yarns. These are the ones I pulled off the line this morning. So there's one that's coming into the shop. So that is a little apricotty lime fading to a teal forest green there with all those delicious speckles. So that's there'll be three of those. This is a very pale uh, skein and it is in the soft, soft, softest teal colour with some tiny, tiny little pops of hot pink fuchsia speckling. So that there'll be three of those in the shop. And I thought I would just talk a little bit more about the linen. So I have dyed up a couple of the the yarn that I'm using for my uh, Zweig is a, uh, a merino, 90% merino, 10% linen. And I did notice when I was dyeing it up that, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, 
but it has areas a little bit just down the bottom there where you can see it's lighter uh, the dye doesn't take to the linen content in the yarn so it gives it almost a well, what I would call a translucent sort of look. <clears throat> the little frog in my throat, just hang on a second there. That's a lot of talking for me. I could spend my whole day and not open my mouth until my husband comes home from work. So when I sit here and do this, this is the most talking I do in the whole week, I reckon. Mind you, last Thursday I caught up on quite a lot of my talking when I was chatting with Em and Susan. So I've dyed up some of this yarn, the merino linen yarn for the shop, and it definitely has a very translucent look to it. So this is one that I've dyed up with the very, very pale bluey teal, which I've speckled there with a plum colour. And a little bit of brown. You can I don't know if you can see it's got a really nice little little um, fuzz on it. It's a very soft yarn and I think it would knit nicely up in for sh to a shawl because it will have a nice drape. <clears throat> so that's that. That's some of the yarn. As you can see back here I'm gradually filling that up. I've got down the bottom there, you can see some of the big yarn babies. I've dyed up quite a few of those, so they're all coming. I've shown a few bags on my Instagram, and I've got a couple more here to show you. So um, this one needs a good press, but we'll get that. Uh, I've got a couple of these with the woodland features inside. Just a drawstring. This is what I would call my little sock bag. And I like to do, I know a lot of people do the square bottom. I like to be different. I'm doing a round bottom. So all my bags have got round bottoms, so they stand quite well. But this would be my small sock size, I'm calling that. And as you can see, like that's that's the same size. This is the one I was showing you before. And I'm keeping my uh, hat in it. And I'll just show you. It doesn't take up anywhere. I think I could fit probably another two skeins of yarn in there easily. So, yeah. They, they still hold a fair, fair amount. And this is one of my larger bags. I haven't shown this one yet on Instagram. This is... Uh, what I would call a jumper bag or a sweater bag. I have made this one out of, um, what's this fabric called again? Hmm, it'll come to me having a mental, mental block. My larger bags have got a little dingle dangle on them. This, that's the technical term. Uh, this one's got a cat with a yellow umbrella because I thought the black and the mustard went nice flannelette with this flannelette. Uh, and inside this bag they have a pocket and I've lined this one with the lovely floral so there's only one of these there's two of these bags one's lined with mustard which I thought was a little bit more masculine and this one uh, as well as many different fabrics in this and yeah so if you're interested in those again the round bottom needs to be defluffed. I've literally just finished making these. They're hot off the press. So they haven't had their final tweaking. But uh, yeah, so that's been keeping me busy. And this week I am working on my rope bowls. So I've allocated each week. So there was card week, bag week, and this is rope week. Intermittently peppered with yarn dyeing. So I think I'll do one more yarn dyeing before the shop opens and then I'll because I'm, I'm planning on focusing on my Zweig in August, so that's that. So, yep, that's everything. Uh, I think I've covered all my bits and pieces. My desk was full. As I've shown it, I've moved it across here, and now my desk is pretty much empty, so I figure I've, I've, done, I've done my job here. Anyway, 
All right, well, it's been great catching up with everybody again. I really enjoy doing the podcast. Uh, I have loved having a little chat with you all this week uh, on on the comments you've left down below. Uh, yep, lots of fun. Uh, so I will see you in a fortnight, and I'm looking forward to doing this vlog. So that's that. If you're interested, continue watching and you will get to do the watercolour tutorial. All right, see you soon. Bye. Okay, so in this tutorial, we are going to be painting this little guy, little penguin with a woolly hat on. And I've got my supplies here. So I've got a pencil, a number 11 round tip prints, Princeton Select brush and a very fine black liner and that is a 0.25 millimeter and I've also got some black paint here and this is Chelsea Venn's arts paint that I bought a while this is a little sample that she gave me in the color space and this particular black has a slight um, sparkle to it but you can just use ordinary black. I've definitely used ordinary black in that one. And just off to the side here, I've got a palette with a few different colors in, um, just to add those two accent colors for the hat and a little bit of a yellow tinge on the tummy. So let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, uh, what I'm suggesting that you do, and I would not normally do this, but I'm going to do it for demonstration purposes. So the basic structure of this little penguin is an S shape. So to start off with, and I'm holding the pencil back so that you can see what I'm doing, uh, you just want to create a slightly distorted S. And no two will turn out the same, and that's okay. That gives them their little individual personalities. Uh, once you feel a bit more confident, you probably wouldn't even need to draw that S in. Uh, I might just go over a little bit darker so that you can see it clearly. Yep, something like that. So... The next thing that you do, I've got my water here, so I'm going to get a good amount of water on this piece and starting at the top, drop some water down. You can actually see how much it's balling on the paper there. So plenty of water, follow the curve of the S around and with watercolour, the colour won't go anywhere that you don't put water. So don't worry about it going all over the place. So once you've got that in, fill the tummy area in with some water and following the back of the head there, down to the bottom of the S, just to round that out and put a good bit of water on that to fill it all in. And that's really the first stage of it. That's all you need to do. Now I'm going to grab my black paint there and get some water on it to activate it. Getting a good uh, amount of colour on the tip of my brush there. And then at the very tip of the head there, you just drop the colour in and it'll instantly start spreading to where you've put the water. So running it down his back, trying to keep that front tummy area a bit lighter because that's where you want to put the yellow. Make it as dark or as light. As I said, each one will turn out slightly differently and that's fine, that just makes it individual. So I like to get a good bit of color on dark around the head there and along the back. There we go, that's getting some good colour in there. 
and as it dries it will just bleed to where it wants to go. I'm just going to round that back area out a little bit more just so he looks balanced. And don't be too hard on yourself, just take your time and if you have to do it a couple of times to get the hang of it, that's fine. You might need to uh, make more than one. And they're a lot of fun to paint, so you probably will want to make more than one anyway. And what I find is because you need some drying time in between, if you've got several of these on the go, by the time you've got to the last one, you can get back to the first one and it'll be dry. So I'm going to leave him there with the black and now I'm dipping into a tiny bit of yellow and I've mixed this color up you could I've used blue I've used green I've used red I mean it's just a personal thing you don't have to add the color if you don't want to um, I just feel like it gives a little bit more interest so just touching a tiny bit of yellow on there just cleaning my brush off to bleed it down so it blends in slightly and that's it. That's really all there is to the main part of it. I'm going to let that dry now and I will be back in a minute when that dries and we will do the next bit. All right, so he's more or less dry and now I am going to add that wing area in. So just dipping back in and getting a little, little bit more of that black paint. And I've got the heater on in here today, so the paint's drying really, really quickly. So starting at the top, just where you think the wing would be. And I just usually add in a slightly darker line and then wash that in a little bit at the back, just to blend it in give the idea of a little wing okay maybe a little bit darker at the bottom there and I might put his little feet in so a little bit of black and all you do for his feet is basically a little straight line with a slight curve to it there we go. it's his little feet in now I'll do his hat and I'm gonna put a little red hat on him so I just dip into a bit of red that I've got here and all I do for that is I just do a little curved section for the ribbing area of the hat and then just pulling it over and making a little trail area for the pom-pom to attach to and then just paint it in make sure it's attached so it looks like it's sitting on his head and a little bit of a pom-pom and all that is is I just do some little dots and lines to indicate a pom-pom and you can make that as big or as small as you like now I won't do the little hat yet but let's do his face so that's pretty much all there is involved in painting him I'm just going to turn this slightly so for his eyeball, it is simply just a little black circle coloured in. There's his eyeball. And at the front of that S section, all you need to do is put a little beak on him. And I normally put a little dot and a line for his nose and his mouth. And that's it. And when his hat dries, I normally just put a few little lines on it to indicate the ribbing at the bottom and a few little lines in that crease and I'll do that when it's dry and give you a close-up shot of it.
But that's all that's involved in painting that little penguin and I'm pretty sure that you guys could do that and I would love to see it. So if you paint it and put it on your Instagram, uh, make sure you tag me so I can have a look and see what you ended up with. You can do different colour hats and things like that. Whatever you fancy. Alright, if you've got any tips or any further information that you'd like with regard to painting this guy, just let me know or if you think I could have uh, given a little bit more information, you would have liked a bit more information on any aspect of it, just let me know and I'll make sure to include that next time. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!